Yeah, so let's uh, transition to the big matchup against Mississippi State. Uh, SEC opener, Mississippi State, uh, impressive against Memphis. They win by 26. They turn around and they go to the desert, take on a hot Arizona team that was coming off a big win for them, and Mississippi State pulls away in the fourth quarter to win that one. Uh, You've seen the Mike Leach offense against your Tigers now two consecutive years, of course, they lit up the Tigers coming off the national championship season. Death Valley, first um, SEC game. Uh, Costello, the uh, transfer from Stanford, throws for an SEC record. Yes, KJ Costello. I haven't said that name probably since that game, so it took me a second to come up with his name. But uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. The, the big shootout against uh, Miles Brennan and company, and then of course last year. LSU goes up to Mississippi State. Uh, there was a little bit of a scare at the end, but LSU basically controlled the game for most, most of the game. So now we got Will Rogers, one of the most accomplished quarterbacks and statistically prolific quarterbacks in the country against uh, this LSU defense. So your, your thoughts about that matchup? Well, I mean, Mississippi State, they're returning 85% of last year's production. Nine of 11 defensive starters, Mark. They are converting 64% on third down right now on offense. And are allowing conversions on just 26% of, of, of their third down stands. Will Rogers at one point threw 15 straight completions at one point last week. Uh, he's throwing 39 per game. I understand the offensive setup allows him to do that, but... Um, 78% completion rating as well. You're going to get that with the short passing offense, of course, as well. But 385 on average. Uh, those third down numbers scare me. Uh, because if Will Rogers can generate drives and, and continue to get into a rhythm with these guys, that is very, very scary for, for a defense that is already a little short on depth. Um, how, how are they going to physically hold up? Especially the linebackers, too. Mark, I'm kind of concerned about our linebackers, Mike Jones, Jr., Greg Penn, the third, how well can they hold up in coverage is, you know, I really feel like this is a game. Micah Baskerville has to be in there. He just had a pick six, a block punt in the last game. I understand it was a pick six against, against Southern, but he had a pick against uh, Florida last year. This is someone who can definitely fill in a huge role for, for this team. Second leading tackler on the team last year as well. Uh, third leading tackler in 2020 as well. Micah Baskerville has kind of been shoved to the to the shadows since Kelly has arrived uh, because they didn't think he'd be available the first two weeks of the season due to academic reasons. Uh, so they were favoring other players, putting him on the fringes of the depth chart. Now everything's been figured out. Everything's solved. He's back to full fitness, playing especially against the Southern game. Um, and everyone can see – He's probably the, the best versatile linebacker for us to, to go up against Will Rogers. But, you know, they were gross on third down, Mark, uh, against both teams. And, you know, just allowed way too much against the run, against Southern, like I said. And while they're also horrible on third, and as, you know, I, I predicted in pass coverage, which could happen against Jordan Travis and definitely did, uh, they responded and pulled off those those four incredible red zone stops. And it says a lot about this defense, I think, that potentially they can keep Will Rogers, you know, maybe to hold hold, a, hold Mississippi State to field goals, keep Will Rogers off the field. You know, that's that's hope, that's hopefully what we're going to see, Mark, because uh, that's what we got to do. we got to force turnovers early. That's what we were able to do against, you know, Will Rogers last year. Cordell Flott gets a pick forces a fumble, uh, I think, on back-to-back drives, if not on back-to-back drives, at least in the first quarter alone. Uh, and it, cha- it changed the whole game. Gave us the advantage. We put up enough points on the board. I think you're going to see a type of game like that where it's going to be in the, in the mid to high 20s, possibly, at the most. And it's going to be a chess match between Matt House's defense and Mike Leach. And um, it's going to be very interesting to see if our linebackers – can hold up what's what's the best combination of linebackers there in the middle and you know we've we've also done something that's kind of interesting interchanging uh greg brooks jr from nickel moving him to back to safety and jay ward from safety 
to nickel. Jay Ward's third position that he's played in three seasons. And, um, you know, he's a former cornerback. I, you know, it looks like he can definitely hold his own there at nickel and will be probably dominating the, the snaps there. And it's going to be probably nickel-only packages against Mississippi State, I, I expect. Lon Philip Sullivan, LSU Odyssey, that's the place to be to uh, track LSU football day by day by day by day leading up to Mississippi State this Saturday in Death Valley. All right, let's flip over to the LSU offense because you mentioned it, you outlined it about Jaden Daniels. He was the rushing offense against Florida State. It shouldn't be that way, uh, but he was the guy that if there was any rushing threat, it was all Jaden Daniels. Now LSU gets... Uh, John Emery back and that could change the dynamic make it more versatile in regards to taking the pressure off of Jaden Daniels to do everything Um, so just just uh, talk about Emery coming back and and what that brings to the offense well I mean Mark uh, Emery returning and it's it's fantastic you got Kane now in there scoring two powerful touchdowns you got Armani Goodwin having career day and so you got you got some more options at a really really short running back you know room for Frank Wilson, really short on options there. You know, I could see them utilizing Jack Mashburn and blocking plays this week and then throwing shots to freshman tight end Mason, Mason Taylor, but using a lot of physical lineups because I feel like, you know, maybe it's not going to be John Emery's career day, you know, or something coming back. You know, he the last time he played was in November of 2020. Uh, John Emery hasn't played a game of football since November 2020. It's almost two years, so – I think, especially when you judge what Brian Kelly was saying, I think they're going to use Emery, of course, and and use him sparingly. But once again, home run hitter who can score on any given play. Absolute brilliant five-star proven talent athlete who's done it against the best against Alabama in 2020. He was really destroying them. And that was a a very good defense, uh, championship defense there for Alabama that he was torturing. But I think – you're going to see a physical set of lineups from LSU this week against against Mississippi State and uh, Zach Arnett's three three five defense because uh, I should say former defensive coordinator candidate at LSU uh, one of one of like twenty in twenty twenty one Zach Arnett and Zach Arnett that three three five defense it's designed to stop the spread attack mark so I think what we're going to see is LSU really try their damnedest to run it down Mississippi State's throat um, as much as possible. Spread them out wide. Use every, you know your playmakers on the perimeter, but attack the middle of that defense, whether it's throwing the ball over the middle, throwing short passes over the middle, running it up the middle. Um, Jaden Daniels going on scrambles up the middle. That's where Mississippi State are at their most susceptible. I mean, Jaden Daniels' greatness, man. I just feel like this is a player who can really do some transcendental things with the football in his hands. I mean, I, I really have a lot of trust in him as our quarterback. I, I really I really do. I, I feel like that's where LSU can take it to the next level. I, I <clears throat> It's all about him hitting the receivers, though, because we've got to get that passing game going. We've got to get that rhythm going get those big plays to the receivers. Cause what if we can't run, run the ball? We have to keep Will Rogers off the field. This offense has to help this defense by sustaining long drives. Jaden Daniels can do it, but he can't do it all on his own. Um, He's got to have help. Kayshawn booty. He's got to have a big day. And I'm really looking for him to have that day. I, he's got to have it. Kayshawn booty. He's got to help out his quarterback. He's not going to be alone though. LSU have a lot of weapons here with Mason Taylor really, really, really playing well the past two fre- the past two games as a freshman tight end. Chris Hilton catching a few passes and looking really good as a, as a speedy option out wide. But Brian Thomas Jr. is really who caught my eye. 44-yard long bomb touchdown. Looked um, unbelievable the first two games whenever he caught the football. And it was very rare. Someone who really needs to get the ball more, Brian Thomas Jr. But Jare Jenkins was clutch as well. So, so this receiving core and Jaden Daniels can do it. I just wish I would have seen more of it against Southern. I wish they would have stayed out there longer, get that rhythm, get that chemistry going. But it's really all about keeping Will Rogers off the field on offense. 
And so that's going to really equate to running the football. Can LSU do that with this retooled offensive line? I think the offensive line is now highlighting more of these guys' strengths to be able to do that, you know, using guys that they're more natural positions that you know, is rooted in their natural strengths as a football player. But uh, John Emery Jr., I don't think you're going to see him be that, like, come out of the gates, John Emery Jr., big plays left and right, but maybe a couple huge plays that when LSU need it big time. Uh, I could see John Emery pulling that off. It's just up to Kelly. I think Kelly is going to be cautious with how they use John. Mississippi State at LSU, first SEC game for both teams. Um, we've got LSU post game right here with Lon after the ball game right here at the Voice of College Football. 